Greetings, friends. After taking a break, we're here again to continue our series on the fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. As our very first fundamental belief indicates, we believe that the Holy Scriptures, Old and New Testaments, are the written Word of God given by divine inspiration. They are the standard of character, the test of experience, the definitive revealer of doctrines, and the trustworthy record of God's acts in history. Now, the Bible tells us um, in Psalm 119, that's the longest psalm in the Bible, verse 105, and it says here, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And it is upon God's word, the Bible, that all our fundamental beliefs are based. Today, we'll be looking at fundamental belief number 19, the law of God. What is the law of God? Is it just a set of arbitrary rules made up by someone wishing to control us? Or could they be rules of life designed to bring us joy and happiness? Now, most people are familiar with the story of Moses going up Mount Sinai, where he received the Ten Commandments written by God's own hand on two tables of stone. These commandments were so important that before writing them down, God spoke them audibly to the entire nation of Israel, reminding them that he is the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And yet, God's law existed long before it was written upon the tables of stone. In fact, it has existed since eternity and is a transcript of God's character of love. In summary, the first four commandments describe how we show our love to God. Number one, you shall have no other gods before me. Number two, you shall not make for yourself any idols. Number three, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. And number four, beautiful commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And the following six commandments describe how we show love to our fellow human beings. Number five, honor your father and your mother. Number six, you shall not kill. Number seven, you shall not commit adultery. Number eight, you shall not steal. Number nine, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. And number 10, you shall not covet. You see, friends, here we have God's 10 brief yet comprehensive authoritative precepts that unlike human laws, which only regulate outward behavior, go much deeper revealing what is in our hearts. Ellen White writes, there is not mystery in the law of God. All can comprehend the great truths which it embodies. The feeblest intellect can grasp these rules. The most ignorant can regulate the life and form the character after the divine standard. Our Seventh-day Adventist fundamental belief number 19 describes the law of God like this. The great principles of God's law are embodied in the Ten Commandments and exemplified in the life of Christ. They express God's love, will, and purposes concerning human conduct and relationships and are binding upon all people in every age. These precepts are the basis of God's covenant with his people and the standard in God's judgment. Through the agency of the Holy Spirit, they point out sin and awaken a sense of need for a Savior. Salvation is all of grace and not of works, and its fruit is obedience to the commandments. This obedience develops Christian character and results in a sense of well-being. It is evidence of our love for the Lord and our concern for our fellow human beings. 
The obedience of faith demonstrates the power of Christ to transform lives and therefore strengthens Christian witness. You see, friends, well, 1 John 3, verse 4, defines sin is the transgression of the law. And Romans 3, 23, tells us that all have sinned and fall, fallen short of the glory of God. God's law points out our need of a Savior, a Savior who through his blood justifies us and by his Spirit sanctifies us, giving us his power to keep his commandments through his strength. We love him because he first loved us. We read in 1 John 4, 19. Jesus tells us in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And the beloved apostle John assures us that his commandments are not burdensome. Friends, there's so much more to learn about this important fundamental belief that we do not have time to discuss in this short video. So I encourage you to visit the URL shown at the bottom of the screen. You'll be able to learn more about the law of God and its implications for us today. Now in closing, let's take just a moment to consider how God's law is an inspiration to the soul. Said the psalmist, Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. I love your commandments more than gold, yes, than fine gold. Even when trouble and anguish have overtaken me, he said, your commandments are my delights. You see, friends, God gave his law to provide people with abundant blessings and to lead them into a saving relationship with him. Let's thank God for the incredible gift he offers through his justifying and sanctifying power as revealed in his eternal law of love. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we come to you thanking you for the eternal law that has been throughout eternity, has been codified on tables of stone and we have them in our Bibles today to remember what life should be as we commit ourselves into your hands. Thank you for the justifying power of Christ. Thank you for the sanctifying power of the Lord and the Holy Spirit. We ask that you will help us to remember that the law of God is your transcript of your character and your character is love. Thank you for hearing us. In Christ's name, amen.